So welcome to another episode of Women Work Wellbeing. It feels so weird saying our new title, but I think I will get used to it. I am so happy and really excited. Honestly, I've been ready for this chat today. I am delighted to welcome Lisa Higgins, who is a menstrual cycle coach. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Zoe. I'm really pleased to be here. I feel like we've got so much to cover and on our off the pod before we hit record, basically, I say off the pod as though we have like this long producer chat, uh, we just chat for a bit and then we hit record. We've already covered so much about the amazing work that Lisa does and I can't wait to dive into all of the work you, that you do and what women are up against now and your Instagram is amazing. I watched some of your videos and I was like, uh-huh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I can relate to that, yep, yeah, that's me. Um, so talk to us, tell me, tell me what you do and why. Yeah, so, wow, it's such a big topic, the menstrual cycle, isn't it? Like there's so many aspects to it, but the, the thing that really is a game changer for me and what changed my own cycle many years ago is menstruality and cycle awareness. And I help women um, and people assigned female at birth how to really sort of use their cycle to um, optimize their life, essentially. It's so incredible for um, working with, you know, work-life balance, how to improve um, mental health symptoms, particularly if you're really someone that really struggles with PMS or perhaps even PMDD side of things, which I specialize in. Um, all of this is basically how you can really harness what's actually going on and use your cycle to improve your life rather than kind of fighting against it every month, which is kind of how we've been traditionally taught to really embrace our cycles as well. Um, and really, this is just a complete uh, reframe, kind of like a, a revolution of sorts of how to really come to in relationship with your cycle. So it becomes your ally, not really your enemy. I think that's so interesting because, and I wish I'd have known about this earlier because um, I've looked at mine for so long being like, uh oh, here it comes the week before. This is when I go so crazy. This is me, you know, and not all women are the same, but then almost fighting against it. Like here it comes. Oh no, I'm not ready for it. And when I watched some of uh, the videos that you shared on your Instagram, I was like, okay, I need to reframe this and I need mm -hmm. to start like working with it so you mentioned um PMDD I I spoke to a gynecologist who was a bit rubbish he said it sounds sounds a bit like you've got it because my mood dips so low can you talk to us about what PMDD is yeah so premenstrual dysphoric disorder is PMDD and this is something that has been it's again, it's one of those things that's kind of seen as like a, uh, a stigma illness that particularly women have. You know, not only is it um, a women's thing, but it's also mental health and it's like, and it's menstrual health. So like all of those put together, it creates this massive stigma, right? But essentially it's a um, sensitivity to what happens when the hormones change, particularly as you enter the luteal phase. And the way that I work with PMDD, there's so much, um, it's quite, even though it's, you know, I've definitely been around for years and years and years, it's something that is now being spoken about a bit more. Doctors are kind of being trained to know what to do when someone comes in with that, which when I, you know, 10 years ago went into the doctor to say that I was suffering with that, it wasn't not even known. Or I didn't even know what it was, but there was nothing. There was no talk of this PMDD. It was just sort of written down in the notes as like premenstrual anxiety. And it was just kind of like, bobbed off to be honest um and yeah you know the way that menstruality kind of views that is um that actually your extreme symptoms that you're suffering with at that part of the month are actually your cycle kind of shouting to you in a way to actually come into this relationship that i talk about so it's you know um for example, if you're struggling particularly with anxiety and you find that these patterns are happening every month and it is um, really just feeling like, you know, you just want to completely escape your life, which is quite a common feeling that people have and clients have, where it's just like, you know, that day or two before um, you, you bleed, it's just like, I literally want to just like run away from my life or burn the house down or just change everything, like break it with a partner, like all of these things. And actually what's happening is that, we are actually on this 28-day system, right, roughly. See, everybody's different and has 
variables, but on average, it's a 28 day cycle. And that actually means that you have a start and an end point to your cycles, right? So menstruation, the first day of your period is day one. And then you're going around on this sort of like cyclical system. And when you get to the end of your cycle, there's like, and it sounds really dramatic, but it's like, there's like a sort of like a death that's happening because that cycle is now ending so that the new one can begin. And that's actually why that extremity of feeling can feel so intense, particularly anybody that's a high sensitive um, or anybody that's particularly, uh, you know, had anything like a trauma through their system or any sort of deep emotional experiences that they might be holding on to. Um, there's a big kind of range of, of, of that, of what that could actually, you know, the reason, the underlying reasons why that could happen. But if you're a high sensitive person, you are going to feel a lot more than somebody else. And that shows up for your cycle in this extreme emotion. And obviously, without any sort of sense of holding for yourself, and this is obviously on an individual basis, but this is so um, much about the collective and how much our cycles in, in general have not been held with any sort of sense of reverence or, um, you know, kind of, treated with care or understanding at all in society for like hundreds of years right um that all has an impact and that's why it can sort of show up as, as this kind of extreme feeling and that's where for me that's where i believe the root of pmdd actually comes from it's that this um this wider lack of kind of being held within the cycle and actually having this relationship with your cycle um you know from from your own self to everybody around you to the society that we live in that is that is honestly I was like a bit open mouth then I look that explanation was one of the best sort of I could I could relate to what you were saying so much because when I started experiencing those symptoms I was like what the hell is wrong with me why do I feel at the depths of despair and then my period would start and I something like literally lifted and shifted and it's so frustrating because obviously what we talk about is, you know, supporting women at work and everything that you just talked about then. It's so frustrating, isn't it, that we as women are going through these phases, these different emotions that change daily. And yet we are expected to turn up, present as as we as we should and be the same. It is so annoying. I mean, I could get really, really, really angry. And I know on your uh, Insta, you talk about the patriarchy. And can you talk to us a bit about that? How can women that are listening, maybe they're in high pressured environments. How do we how do we facilitate this change and movement to start to if we're going to start listening to our bodies? How do we then fit that in with everyday life? Well, I mean, you're so right, Zoe, like the the whole it applies to everything like you know every single the way we even have like the working day structure the fact that we do work like five days a week and it is just that repetitive thing and I know that's not true for everybody of course and you know luckily these days there is more kind of um scope for um living a more you know flexible lifestyle with flexible working and remote working and all that kind of thing is a lot better but then there are still some professions, of course, that are just, you have to just turn up and do this job in this office or wherever it is, and that's it. And um, it's kind of like, I feel like it's almost like the, it's the missing thing. And it's almost like when the kind of, you know, equal rights of, of working women kind of was, was really getting, you know, under fire. And there's so much progress that's been made. But actually, I, I believe that it's kind of, gone a bit wonky because at the same time we're kind of getting equal opportunities and 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 that kind of thing it's like but we still have this completely different system of our own well-being that we're kind of being forced to um forget about at the same time and obviously because it's never even you know nobody's been reared on this why how would we even know that um or how to change it like you say and i think the first real thing for people to to kind of um start with is awareness so knowing that this is happening knowing that you are on this sort of cyclical system as i said and then really trying to learn, get to know your cycle and learn more about how you respond to that because that's the other side of it so you've got like the phases of the cycle and the ups and downs and all what happens and then you've got your own personal relationship to that and that could then you know 
mean different things according to where it is in the cycle and that's kind of you know a bit deeper and that's kind of what I get into with clients and stuff but you know tracking your cycle is everything so starting to know your own fluctuations um you know and if you're somebody that doesn't have a cycle at the moment perhaps you're on um hormonal contraception or for any other reason that you just don't have a cycle at the moment you can actually get into this pattern of um cyclical living by using the moon um and that is a way of just knowing that actually you know like the moon we kind of shift and transform in each of these phases and it kind of gets you into that practice of, of tracking your cycle in that sense um but yeah it's just about trying to really i guess learn your own relationship to this work first and then i promise you that when you do this you're going to get like so fired up like you, you know you're just saying there so like when you know about this stuff even more and the more you learn you're just like going to be so raging that you're just going to be like storming into hr and being like where's my menstrual policy <laughs> <laughs> so it will happen naturally i swear <laughs> yeah you can yeah the fire is in my belly for sure can you talk to us about the phases then for anyone listening that's like what phases what's going on here yeah of course so um one of the easiest maps of menstruality, and it's obviously a map of just the biology as well, is the four phases. And um, these are in sort of a biological terms known as the, uh, obviously the menstrual phase. Then you've got the follicular phase, which is just after your period finishes. Then you've got ovulation, um, which is roughly two weeks-ish from when you start your period. And then the final phase is the luteal phase, and that's when you're premenstrual. Now, I want you to forget about all that and now think about the four phases in a totally different way. And this is all to do with the inner seasons of the cycle. So just like the four seasons of the um, of nature that we're in, in the year, um, this is all about each week of your cycle being reflected with an inner season. So what that means is um, menstruation is the inner winter. Then you've got inner spring, which is that week after your period. Then you've got the inner summer, which is ovulation, and then the luteal phase when you're premenstrual, that's the inner autumn. Now, when you start to engage in this way and actually even think about that, I mean, not only does that already show you how much um, we, and this is all within one month, so how much we shift and mutate within one month when you think about the seasons of, of nature and how much they change throughout one year. Um, so we're condensing that into a month. So for example, when we think about um, our well-being, for example, it's like menstruation and the inner in winter. So obviously in winter now, we do fill it with a lot of things like parties and Christmas and big events, even that, even so. But actually in nature, winter is about rest and it's about going inward and actually doing like nothing and you know, animals hibernate and it's very much a quiet time. And that is something that we should be really taking from nature in that sense. And during our period, we really, really need to be doing as little as possible. Um, resting, reflecting, um, having quiet time, doing things like lovely things like meditation and, and also like really nourishing things like how in winter, you know, you love like having like comfort food and just like snuggling and making everything really cozy. Like all of that stuff is how we should think about our period week. Then when you move on to the inner spring, so this is when traditionally like we start to feel a bit more energy coming back into our system after our period finishes. And it's this kind of time that like spring in the real spring in nature, it's very much like you start to get like new sprouts coming up. So like new ideas of plans, for example, you might start thinking about the month ahead and what you wanna do. Um, it's a really fruitful time for, um, putting stuff out there like you're thinking about in terms of work as well like new ideas for collaborations potentially or um I don't know just new ideas for anything basically it's so much about like new 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 fresh starts and all of that kind of spring feeling um then we move on to the inner summer and that is much more about getting your shit done so it's the superwoman week and this is where we feel we naturally can feel like so much energy so much um or zest for life and we feel like anything's capable and we can take on all the to-do lists and we plan loads of stuff and we can do the after work drinks and still get up in the morning or we could do before well when we're in our 20s <laughs> i definitely can't do that even in the summer now um 
but yeah like it's your kind of like right i can do this like you know um and then of course as most people know the autumn is where things start to change and it's kind of like i mean some people really look forward to autumn but a lot of people kind of don't want the summer to end and that's kind of our state and it's kind of zooming out of that it's kind of our state of, of how we're actually living in society we uh, you know as women as men as everybody it's it's that kind of addiction to doing and productivity and and um cramming everything in and social media and everything 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 all at once and everything's getting smarter and quicker and faster and it's just kind of like exploding and damaging the world and you know all of that that kind of summer addiction is why it's hard to then come down into the premenstrual side of of us um and when we don't do that when we don't realize that actually there's a turn of a season here and we actually need to slow down really so that we can end up in uh the menstruation phase feeling ready for it because you can't really go from a from a high high energy do all the things summer feeling without and then just suddenly drop into right i've got to go inside and meditate and be quiet and and all of that now like it's just not going to happen and it's why so much of pre-menstrual um like pms and those experience uh, um, symptoms sorry are really prominent at that point because and they can be worse if we're not we don't know that that's actually going to come and that it's going to be there because um it's just sort of like you know you, and, and to put a real tangible example it could be like you know you're kind of doing your thing and then the next day you kind of wake up and you're on your way to work and then something happens and you get really stressed out like someone cuts in front of you or and you feel that rage and it's like oh i'm really annoyed about that and actually yesterday you probably wouldn't have been and that's kind of the sign that you're actually heading into your autumn and you know again when we think about nature in autumn it's about letting go and it's about um kind of coming into a quieter time, kind of reflecting on what's happened in the year. You know, we have the period of harvest and it's about kind of being more grateful for what's happened, but also looking into things like, oh, what could be um, changed a little bit? Like autumn's amazing for doing any kind of like editing work or anything like that, because you're kind of cutting through the noise in your autumn when you're premenstrual. Um, and yeah, it's really actually quite a powerful time. But again, like we've never really been shown how to use that part of our cycle for positivity or for any, um, you know, any good at all. It's just been this massively feared and loathed and distressing part of our month. Um, but actually, there are benefits to each phase. So, yeah. Wow, that is um, that is so interesting. And there's so much that I want to pick out and talk about, but particularly just on what you've just said about that phase that I personally have looked on as uh uh-oh it's coming feeling just exactly as you described something will happen and I will switch and it's happened in the last few days like I've been snapping at the kids and I looked at my my husband in the kitchen like last night and I was like you know angry and and it makes everything that you've just said make sense to be so in tune with it so we can prepare and as a yoga teacher I'm in touch with you know seasonality and what we do and I know that like you said at Christmas we all go out and party and we fill our calendar when we should be just hibernating so I'm guilty of knowing that but still doing it so what I'm hearing you say is it's kind of like we need to empower ourselves it's not like someone like they could work with you but we also need to take some responsibility for this ourselves don't we and and understand what's going on in our own body but this just is so fascinating to me I do need to just talk about though how you said you know what traditionally we're perhaps taught about and back to this um you also talked about this uh, on your social about how we are mocked you know the 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 PMS woman that's getting angry oh she's angry before a period that that's what's been put out to society so it's almost like that's what we're led to believe isn't it can you talk to us more about that yeah absolutely um I mean I'm actually in my autumn now as well I'm at day 23 so this might come out (laughs) pretty passionate as it always does anyway but yeah I have that extra fire today um yeah I mean this is really the I guess this is where the passion comes out in me as well and it's kind of why I set up the Red Rebel Collective which is um very much kind of like the movement side of things aside from the the one-to-one work because it's just kind of like it's just so um 
wrong <laughs> that we have been uh, hidden from all of this stuff for so long. And I truly believe that it really goes back like so, so far about when women were kind of cut off from these sort of powers. Like it kind of goes down to like the witch hunts and all of that stuff like back in centuries ago when things were, um, you know, anybody that was in tune with their natural state and the kind of healers and all of that were kind of like took away and um, suppressed and then like the patriarchy took over and all of this. And, and it's just kind of like when you think about women's body and obviously there's so many things and so many issues around women's body and how it's been used and suppressed and, you know, just for the history of time, right? Um, but with cycles, it's like, there's just no kind of awareness of how a woman's life journey progresses and the way that every uh, part of that is kind of held through society is really reflected. And it, it goes from everything, like you're saying, like the premenstrual woman and how actually it's a really powerful time in our month and we can access these powers. Like, like I said, you know, being able to edit and cut through the noise is so powerful for like, think about women in like leadership roles or just, anything like that where you've kind of got to be like right let's just like forget everything and just go for this one thing or just that kind of confidence that that actually we have in us at that time but we've just been and I believe intentionally or maybe subconsciously intentionally um like shown that actually we shouldn't be uh, at all embracing that and actually we should be hiding that and you know and then it gets mocked and all the jokes and everything that kind of happened still in 2024 um, and there's this amazing power of the inner autumn that I always talk about. It's called the truth teller. Um, it's also known as the bullshit detector. You can choose whichever title you want. <laughs> but basically, it's just that thing of like, like I say, like your truth comes out and it can come out in a really um, challenging way, of course. And that is where suffering happens. Like, but it's this, this underneath a lot of these symptoms, sometimes it's, there's some truth in there and that's not to say that you know when you get like you're feeling so awful and actually the inner critic is going crazy on us and um that that's allowed not at all but there's even some kind of nugget of truth and actually when you kind of keep going and keep going with something and you find that actually um there's something in there that wants to be heard whether that is something that is a part of the suffering that still needs to come out or whether it's something that actually you, you need to maybe look at in your life or you know repeated patterns repeated feelings of unhappiness um that just keep showing up in that uh, space of your month there's something that's been uh, told to you there by like kind of like your inner your inner self that's coming through your cycle but again we've just been told never to really look at that side of us so how would we ever know to embrace it um and it also stems from like you know this is really really directly connected to how um perimenopausal and menopausal women are kind of seen in society and all of that and obviously there's so much positive work being done with that at the moment um but that's exactly the same and then when you look at postmenopausal women and how you know the kind of uh, once you've had your menopause you're kind of cast aside and th there's no sort of um you know there's a, a, a obsession with things like youth and beauty and all of that like it all fe it's all feeding into this same sort of serpent and actually, like postmenopausal women are the best and they're so wise and they are our elders and we should be really, really looking to them, especially as women, to kind of get that wisdom. Um, yeah. So there's so much I could say on this. <laughs> I know. It is just fascinating. And I love that idea of like cutting through the noise, the editing. So instead of, again, seeing it as like, this is the bad week, how I have been, literally, that has been my narrative, like dreading what's to come because of the pain, the emotions. I am fascinated. I'd love to do a deeper dive on that, maybe that trauma in the body or something that's recurring. I think that when we listen so deeply and connect, we can learn so much about ourselves and it is so powerful. Um, it is frustrating that society has just literally quashed it for years. I've said this on my podcast and people will be like, oh, she's saying it again. But I remember waiting for my mum to pick me up in primary school and a teacher walking past me saying, oh, Zoe, you need to sort out these periods as though there was like a magic wand, a pill I could take to eradicate the pain. And they were they were just as they are now, like really heavy, really painful from the minute they started, same as my mum. 
And that's the message that I was told. It, you know, it was, it was got to sort it out, got to keep going, got to just carry on as normal. And I think that's where my passion and my anger and everything that I do, at, you know, jobs for women, it's kind of like, we can't just be robots. We are different. We know that there's the, the there is just no way as much money going into women's health funding. Um, and it is so frustrating. So I just want to ask your thoughts on sort of menstruation policies at work. Cause I once went in and had a face to face with a global company who said, we tried but the men kicked up a fuss. We tried to implement a policy. And I don't know whether that was specific actually to a day off, but have you got any thoughts on menstruation policies or what, what either if you're running a team, if you're listening and maybe you do work in HR or whether, you know, from a woman that's suffering and maybe she can go in and say, hey, what have you got for me? Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, things are slowly changing, but that, you know, like, like you said, there's always going to be examples and, you know, of companies that are just not really progressing with it. Um, the first thing I would always do if you were a business or, you know, head of HR is speak to the people that menstruate. <laughs> speak to the women. Like, ask them first what they want. Because, again, it's like all of this stuff kind of gets talked about largely by, um, you know, people that are higher up. And they're not actually communicating with the people that it involves, you know. And, again, it, that kind of then feeds into the whole thing about women's bodies being dissected and by people that are not women you know and it's just kind of um perpetuating that so first and foremost always communicate with them first and have like an open forum or have some sort of um meeting where you can kind of just get some information about what they actually would want um menstrual leave obviously is amazing to be able to create a culture where people can feel completely unashamed to say I'm taking menstrual leave like that is like the holy grail of what we want to achieve really with every industry every business um but there are steps if you don't want to go straight to that or you can't or whatever the reasons are then things like flexible working are amazing like you know it's not that hard to put in a flexible working policy now and pretty much most places do um allowing for that like allowing someone to work remotely or maybe just do a half day or just get done down some you know absolute essential tasks and then have like an afternoon off or something like that like we need to really start treating everybody as human beings and um you know just thinking about it in that sense like how can you make their day easier and then also getting some kind of education in there like getting both people to uh, say both people both like all genders to come together and actually learn more about cycles um this isn't really something that, although it's kind of, again, this is where it kind of gets in the, to the nuances of companies and what people prefer um, to happen. But in my opinion, it's important to educate everybody at the, at the company because just to kind of give, although it's nice to offer women a women only space, which is really important to create like a women's forum or something where they can kind of feel free to talk about these things without having to worry about anybody else knowing about it. And also just to create that sense of kind of community, which also then makes people feel more comfortable to talk about it, um, particularly if they're kind of suffering with something. It's really important to get men on, in, involved as well and on board. And, you know, it's just like, this affects everybody. This affects whether you have a, a sister or a mother or a wife, like a friends, like, this affects you through them. Like, it's not just about women, it's about our relationships to women and how we treat them and, and also um, communication. Like, you know, this kind of isn't really answering your question and going on a tangent, but just to say like how amazing this is for relationships because once you are both understanding this stuff together, like so many arguments are saved and like, this is just something that becomes just an easy thing in your lives and it's just kind of like that awareness of when you're what you need in certain weeks of the month and it could just be the little things that make such a big difference to relationships too it goes such a long way yeah that's great advice and I am I am so with you I, you have to have men part of the conversation in order to in order to make change because those men might be leaders of companies husbands brothers whatever it is um so having that knowledge it, it's sharing the knowledge isn't it that this isn't something that we're quashing we don't want to hide it away this happens naturally we're keeping the world you know 
we're keeping civilization going periods are part and parcel of of um of life um and then we've got to wrap up soon but have you got some tips for women that are listening that are like, okay, I'm going to start doing this or what they can do right now to take back control, to empower themselves? Mm. Yeah. So the first thing I would definitely do is to start tracking, which you can do right now. Um, all you need to do, it's so easy to start, just like get a book, get a notebook, get a journal. You can do, obviously there's loads of apps and stuff that help people track now. You can even just do it on notes in your phone, which I do a lot now because I have a young child and I can't spend hours journaling. Um, yeah, whatever works for you. It has to be something, a way of doing it that is going to be easy and make you want to do it every day. So don't worry about writing reams and reams of stuff. Like keep it really short. And all you want to do is write down to the day that you're on. And if you're not sure, then day one is always the first day of your period when it's kind of in full flow. Like if you get a bit of spotting or something that's not quite day one. Day one is when it's like, okay, period's here. Um, and you just want to think about, so how are you essentially? And you want to think about that in terms of your physical energy. Um, you want to think about your emotions. How are you? Sometimes if you just ask yourself, how am I feeling? Like a reaction will definitely come. Um, and then you want to think about other things like, do you feel particularly, if you, you know, you, you're somebody that's um, very creative, like do you feel, how's your focus today? How's your um, concentration? Are you feeling very creative? Are you feeling kind of slow and sluggish? Like it's just about those little changes that you feel are a bit different to the day before. Um, it can also be that you fill in a little bit from, this is what I do. So I tend to write in the morning, but then I usually go back to the day before because obviously you've had like the rest of the day and sometimes, well, obviously lots of stuff can happen in the evening and all that kind of thing. So I'll always go to the day before as well and note down anything that happens. So say something happened and it really triggered you and stressed you out and like whatever happened or upset you write that down, just a small note about it and write down like what happened to make you feel better? What happened that, or like, what did you do that made you feel worse? Or, you know, like little things like that. It doesn't have to be a massive diary entry, but all these little things really do add up and just have to trust the process for like a month or two. And then it only really takes like two or three months and you start to see patterns and then it's like, oh my God, like it's just so crazy, all of the stuff that you get to see about how, you know, it could be like, I mean, I had this thing like years ago, I always remember where every single day 21, I just had like a huge body critic and just felt like awful. And was just like, oh, that like really, I had like inner critic, like saying that I looked horrible and all this stuff. And it used to really get to me and I just feel like shit the whole day, obviously. And I realized when I did my tracking, I looked back and I was like, this is happening every day on the same day of the cycle. And then it was just like, okay, so what's actually happening? Obviously then having the awareness that um, progesterone is kind of making you feel a bit more bloated and things like that at that point. So it was like, oh, okay, well, there's actually also a biological reason why things are like, clothes are feeling tight and that's triggering all sorts of shit in my brain about it. Um, and yeah, so awareness. So then actually the next month I was like, right, so the day before I'm going to do something really nice for myself and I'm going to make sure that, you know, on that day, I don't like, you know, go to a shop and try on new clothes, for example, like just things that are going to make it a bit less triggering. And also just give myself more love that day and do stuff that's a bit nicer and plan nice things and stuff. And it just never came back. It's like so crazy. Like the awareness is everything. And sometimes when you, when you have this and you go through this process, you're just like, it just dissipates because a lot of it is just not knowing what's actually happening. And once you get that that awareness and that story and that education, it's like, it just goes. Incredible. That is absolutely amazing. And I'm guessing that if someone is listening and they're doing that, they can start to potentially look at the work, it, the month and what they've got on with work and start to work out when they're more creative, when they need to slow down. And I know not everyone listening can do that, but if you do have a little bit more of a remote way of working or you can have a bit more autonomy with your meetings maybe not plan the big high level meetings where you're you know running everything um I am so fascinated I could talk to you all day um so 
I know you've mentioned your Red Rebel Collective, which sounds awesome. If people want to connect with you, whether one-to-one -one or in that group, how can they find you? So you can come to my website. So it's um, lisahigginscoach.com. Or you can, there's quite a lot of freebies on there as well, actually, that are all that are quite nice. So you should definitely grab some of those. And um, obviously, I'm on Instagram. Uh, I've just changed it, actually. It was the Red Rubber Collective, but I've changed it because we're just redeveloping things at the moment. So let me just double check I've got the right one. But yeah, it's at Lisa Higgins Rebel. Um, awesome. and I'll put the links yeah. in the show notes um, as well thank you so much for I feel like we could literally I mean I do say that a lot but I feel like we could just go to town on this subject um, and we should definitely do something together um, in the future for our community so thank you Lisa for your time I think you are amazing and just keep smashing it keep doing this amazing important work oh thank you so so much for having me I've loved it and yes here's the future <laughs>